The October Revolution, officially known in the Soviet literature as the Great October Socialist Revolution, and commonly referred to as Red October, the October Uprising or the Bolshevik Revolution, was a seizure of state power instrumental in the larger Russian Revolution of 1917. It took place with an armed insurrection in Petrograd traditionally dated to 25 October 1917. It followed and capitalized on the February Revolution of the same year, which overthrew the Tsarist autocracy and established a provisional government composed predominantly of former nobles and aristocrats. During this time, urban workers began to organize into councils wherein revolutionaries criticized the provisional government and its actions. The October Revolution in Petrograd overthrew the provisional government and gave the power to the local Soviets. The Bolshevik Party was heavily supported by the Soviets. After the Congress of Soviets, now the governing body, had its second session, it elected members of the Bolsheviks and other leftist groups such as the Left Socialist Revolutionaries to key positions within the new state of affairs. This immediately initiated the establishment of the Russian Socialist Federative Soviet Republic, the world's first self-proclaimed socialist state. The revolution was led by the Bolsheviks, who used their influence in the Petrograd Soviet to organize the armed forces. Bolshevik Red Guards forces under the Military Revolutionary Committee began the takeover of government buildings on 24 October 1917. The following day, the Winter Palace was captured. The long-awaited Constituent Assembly elections were held on 12 November 1917. The Bolsheviks only won 175 seats in the 715-seat legislative body, coming in second behind the Socialist Revolutionary Party, which won 370 seats. The Constituent Assembly was to first meet on 28 November 1917, but its convocation was delayed until 5 January 1918 by the Bolsheviks. On its first and only day in session, the body rejected Soviet decrees on peace and land, and was dissolved the next day by order of the Congress of Soviets. As the revolution was not universally recognized, there followed the struggles of the Russian Civil War and the creation of the Soviet Union in 1922. Etymology Initially, the event was referred as the October Coup or the Uprising of 25th as seen in contemporary documents. In Russian, however, has a similar meaning to revolution and also means upheaval or overturn. So, coup is not necessarily the right translation. With time, the term October Revolution came into use. It is also known as the November Revolution, having occurred in November according to the Gregorian calendar. The Great October Socialist Revolution was the official name for the October Revolution in the Soviet Union after the 10th anniversary of the revolution in 1927. Background the February Revolution had toppled Tsar Nicholas II of Russia and replaced his government with the Russian Provisional Government. However, the Provisional Government was weak and riven by internal dissension. It continued to wage World War I, which became increasingly unpopular. A nationwide crisis developed in Russia, affecting social, economic, and political relations. Disorder in industry and transport had intensified, and difficulties in obtaining provisions had increased. Gross industrial production in 1917 had decreased by over 36% from what it had been in 1916. In the autumn, as much as 50% of all enterprises were closed down in the Urals, the Donbass, and other industrial centers, leading to mass unemployment. At the same time, the cost of living increased sharply. The real wages of the workers fell about 50% from what they had been in 1913. Russia's national debt in October 1917 had risen to 50 billion rubles. If this, debts to foreign governments constituted more than 11 billion rubles, the country faced the threat of financial bankruptcy. In September and October 1917, there were strikes by the Moscow and Petrograd workers, the miners of the Donbass, the metal workers of the Urals, 
the oil workers of Baku, the textile workers of the Central Industrial Region, and the railroad workers on 44 different railway lines. In these months alone more than a million workers took part in mass strike action. Workers established control over production and distribution in many factories and plants in a social revolution. By October 1917 there had been over 4,000 peasant uprisings against landowners. When the provisional government sent out punitive detachments it only enraged the peasants. The garrisons in Petrograd, Moscow, and other cities, the northern and western fronts, and the sailors of the Baltic fleet in September openly declared through their elected representative bodies and tribals that they did not recognize the authority of the provisional government and would not carry out any of its commands. In a diplomatic note of the 1st of May, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Pavel Milyakov, expressed the provisional government's desire to carry the war against the Central Powers through to a victorious conclusion, arousing broad indignation. On 1-4 May about 100,000 workers and soldiers of Petrograd and after them the workers and soldiers of other cities led by the Bolsheviks, demonstrated under banners reading, down with the war, and all power to the Soviets. The mass demonstrations resulted in a crisis for the provisional government. The 1st of July saw more demonstrations, as about 500,000 workers and soldiers in Petrograd demonstrated, again demanding, all power to the Soviets, down with the war, and down with the ten capitalist ministers. The provisional government opened an offensive against the Central Powers on 1 July but it soon collapsed. The news of the offensive and its collapse intensified the struggle of the workers and the soldiers. A new crisis in the provisional government began on 15 July. On 16 July spontaneous demonstrations of workers and soldiers began in Petrograd, demanding that power be turned over to the Soviets. The Central Committee of the Russian Social Democratic Labour Party provided leadership to the spontaneous movements. On 17 July, over 500,000 people participated in a peaceful demonstration in Petrograd, the so-called July Days. The provisional government, with the support of the Socialist Revolutionary Party Menshevik leaders of the All-Russian Executive Committee of the Soviets, ordered an armed attack against the peaceful demonstrators, murdering hundreds. A period of repression followed. On 5-6 July attacks were made on the editorial offices and printing presses of Pravda and on the palace of Kshezinskaya, where the Central Committee and the Petrograd Committee of the Bolsheviks were located. On 7 July a government decree ordering the arrest and trial of Vladimir Lenin was published. He was forced to go underground, just as he had been under the Tsarist regime. Bolsheviks began to be arrested, workers were disarmed, and revolutionary military units in Petrograd were disbanded or sent off to the front. On 12 July the provisional government published a law introducing the death penalty at the front. The formation of the second coalition government, with Alexander Kerensky as chairman, was completed on 24 July. Another problem for the government centered on General Lavr Kornilov, who had been commander-in-chief since 18 July. In response to a Bolshevik appeal, Moscow's working class began a protest strike of 400,000 workers. The Moscow workers were supported by strikes and protest rallies by workers in Kiev, Kharkov, Nizhny Novgorod, Ekaterinburg, and other cities. In what became known as the Kornelov Affair, Kornelov directed an army under Alexander Krimov to march toward Petrograd with Kerensky's agreement. Although the details remained sketchy, Kerensky appeared to become frightened by the possibility of a coup and the order was countermanded. On 27 August, feeling betrayed by the Kerensky government who had previously agreed with his views on how to restore order to Russia, Kornelov pushed on towards Petrograd. With few troops to spare on the front, Kerensky was forced to turn to the Petrograd Soviet for help. 
Bolsheviks, Mensheviks and socialist revolutionaries confronted the army and convinced him to stand down. The Bolsheviks' influence over railroad and telegraph workers also proved vital in stopping the movement of troops. The damage was already done, however, right-wingers felt betrayed, and the left-wing was resurgent. With Kornelov defeated, the Bolsheviks' popularity with the Soviets significantly increased. During and after the defeat of Kornilov, a mass turn of the Soviets toward the Bolsheviks began, both in the central and local areas. On 31 August, the Petrograd Soviet of Workers and Soldiers Deputies, and on 5 September, the Moscow Soviet Workers Deputies adopted the Bolshevik resolutions on the question of power. The Bolsheviks won a majority in the Soviets of Bryansk, Samara, Saratov, Tsaritsyn, Minsk, Kiev, Tashkent, and other cities. Events On 23 October, OS the 10th of October, 1917, the Bolsheviks Central Committee voted 10 to 2 for a resolution saying that an armed uprising is inevitable, and that the time for it is fully ripe. On the 6th of November, OS, the 24th of October, 1917, Bolsheviks led their forces in the uprising in Petrograd, the capital of Russia, against the Kerensky Provisional Government. Leon Trotsky distributes arms to the Red Guards, which systematically captures major government facilities, key communication, installations and vantage points with little opposition. The Petrograd garrison rebels against the provisional government, claiming that it is a tool of the enemies of the people. For the most part, the revolt in Petrograd was bloodless with the Red Guards led by Bolsheviks finally launching an assault on the poorly defended Winto Palace. The official Soviet version of events follows. An assault led by Vladimir Lenin was launched at 9.45 p.m., signaled by a blank shot from the cruiser Aurora. The Winter Palace was guarded by Cossacks, cadets, and a women's battalion. It was taken at about 2 a.m. The earlier date was made the official date of the revolution, when all officers except the Winter Palace had been taken. More contemporary research with access to government archives significantly corrects accepted Soviet edited and embellished history. The archival version shows that parties of Bolshevik operatives sent out from the Smolny by Lenin took over all critical centers of power in Petrograd in the early hours of the first night without a shot being fired. This was completed so efficiently that the takeover resembled the changing of the guard. The capture of the Winter Palace was more dramatic, with the Red Guards storming the Winter Palace at 2.10 a.m. on the night of 7-8 November, OS. 25-26 October, 1917. The Cossacks deserted when the Red Guard approached, and the cadets and the 140 volunteers of the Women's Battalion surrendered rather than resist the 40,000-strong army. The Aurora was commandeered to then fire blanks at the palace in a symbolic act of rejection of the government. In fact the effectively unoccupied Winto Palace fell not because of acts of courage or a military barrage, but because the back door was left open, allowing the Red Guard to enter. A Red Guard named Adamovich remembered gasping as he burst into the palace, as he had never before seen such luxury and splendor. A small group broke in, got lost in the cavernous interior, and accidentally happened upon the remnants of Kerensky's provisional government in the imperial family's breakfast room. The illiterate revolutionaries then compelled those arrested to write up their own arrest papers. The provisional government was arrested and imprisoned in Peter and Paul Fortress after the ministers resigned to fate and surrendered without a fight, and officially overthrown. The stories of the defense of the Winter Palace and the heroic storming of the Winter Palace came later as the creative propaganda product of Bolshevik publicists. Grandiose paintings depicting the women's battalion and photo stills taken from Sergei Eisenstein's staged film depicting the politically correct version of the October events in Petrograd came to be taken as truth. 
with the government Petrograd Soviet now in control of government, garrison and proletariat. The Second All-Russian Congress of Soviets held its opening session on the day, while Trotsky dismisses the opposing Mensheviks and the socialist revolutionaries from Congress. Some sources contend that as the leader of Zentrobolt, Pavlo Dybenko actually played an enormous role in the revolt. It is said that the ten warships that entered the city with 10,000 Baltic Fleet mariners was the force that actually took the power in Petrograd and put down the provisional government. The same mariners then dispersed by force the elected parliament of Russia and used machine gun fire against protesting demonstrators in Petrograd. About a hundred demonstrators were killed, and several hundreds were wounded. Dybenko in his memoirs mentioned this event as several shots in the air. Later, during the first hours after the taking the Winto Palace, Dybenko personally entered the Ministry of Justice and destroyed there the documents concerning the financing of the Bolshevik Party by Germany. These are disputed by various sources such as Louise Bryant, who claims that news outlets in the West at the time reported that the unfortunate loss of life occurred in Moscow not Petrograd and the number was much less than is suggested above. As for the several shots in the air, there is little evidence suggesting otherwise. The alleged action of Dybenko entering the Ministry of Justice to destroy documents as recalled by Savchenko can also be challenged. According to reports, Pavel Dybenko was in Helsingfors organizing the sailors' departures for Petrograd. From the book Radio October, on the Kreshe in Helsingfors, radio operator Makarov hands a telegram to Pavel Dybenko with the report of the Samson Commissar Grigory Borisov to Zentrobolt. Everything is calm in Petrograd. The power is in the hands of the Revolutionary Committee. You have to immediately get in touch with the Front Committee of the Northern Army in order to preserve unity of forces and stability. Later, official accounts of the revolution from the Soviet Union would depict the events in October as being far more dramatic than they actually had been. This was helped by the historical reenactment, entitled The Storming of the Winter Palace, which was staged in 1920. This reenactment, watched by 100,000 spectators, provided the model for official films made much later, which showed a huge storming of the Winter Palace and fierce fighting. In reality the Bolshevik insurgents faced little or no opposition. The insurrection was timed and organized to hand state power to the Second All-Russian Congress of Soviets of Workers and Soldiers Deputies which began on 25 October. After a single day of revolution 18 people had been arrested and two had been killed. Timeline of the spread of Soviet power 5 November 1917, Tallinn 7 November 1917 Petrograd, Minsk, Novgorod, Ivanovo, Vasna, and Skantachu. The 8th of November 1917, Ufa, Kazan, Yekaterinburg, and Narva. The 9th of November 1917, Vitesk, Yaroslavl, Saratov, Samara, and Izhesk. The 10th of November 1917, Rostov, Tver, and Nizhny Novgorod. The 12th of November 1917. Foreigners, Smolensk and Gommel, the 13th of November 1917, Tambov, the 14th of November 1917, Oral and Perm, the 15th of November 1917, PSKOV, Moscow and Baku, the 27th of November 1917, Tsaritsyn, the 1st of December 1917, Mojalev. The 8th of December 1917, Vyatka. The 10th of December 1917, Kishinev. The 11th of December 1917, Kaluga. The 14th of December 1917, Novrysysk. The 15th of December 1917, Kostroma. The 20th of December 1917, Tula. The 24th of December 1917. Kharkov, the 29th of December 1917, Sevastopol, the 4th of January 1918, Penza, the 11th of January 1918, Yekaterinoslav, 
The 17th of January 1918, Petros Arvodes. The 19th of January 1918, Paul Tava. The 22nd of January 1918, Jitamir. The 26th of January 1918, Simferopol, the 27th of January 1918, Nikolaev, the 28th of January 1918, Helsinki, the 29th of January 1918, the 31st of January 1918, Odessa and Orenburg, the 7th of February 1918, Astrakhan, the 8th of February 1918, Kiev and Vologda, the 17th of February 1918, Archangelsh, the 25th of February 1918, Novokokask, 